So synthesis. So synthesis again, top down. Uh, it involves a physical or chemical um, a cutting of the microscopic material, uh, like achieving the quantum dots from very big scale, and then uh, to the to the nano scale. So using something very big, break it down, break it down, and make the quantum dots. So it usually needs the harsh condition, long reaction times, expensive ingredients, and we're not going to talk about them again. But there is a bottom up, which is always good. Uh, it's involved building quantum carbon quantum dots from the molecular precursors. They are usually inex inexpensive, simple, and uh, have great flexibility in ingredient selection from organic uh, compounds. To give you some examples, we can use ultrasonic uh, to make them. So having the organic molecules using ultrasonic to make them, the hydrothermal method and the microwave assistant. So uh, today I'm going basically to talk about the hydrothermal method, which is a very, very popular and common uh, bottom-up approaches to make the carbon quantum dots. So in general, synthesis of these carbon quantum dots is very, very easy when we compare it with the uh, other uh, nanoparticles or other, uh, yeah, other type of nanoparticle. The synthesis of them is extremely easy. So all we need to start the synthesis is the carbon source. So if we just look around ourselves, there are so many um, carbon sources that we can use. So I have listed some of them here. Uh, maybe this one, not now, maybe at the weekends, we have the, when we have the barbecues, or from now on, when you look at, at the sausages or the steaks, maybe you can remember that we can use them or the waste of them. We can use the waste of them for making the carbon quantum dots. And if you open the fridge now, um, we can see many of these items here, the fruits, the vegetables, milk, so whatever is organic, you know, that we, have, we can use them to make the uh, carbon quantum dots. And of course, the beer. So this is me when I was like drinking beer in Mandy, and I just realized, oh, the beer can also be used to make the carbon quantum dots. And uh, the human urine, which I'm not gonna discuss about them much, that can also be used to make the carbon quantum dots. The cigarette box is another option. Uh, if we uh, uh, use the proper solvent and the coffee bean base. So you can see it's just not about uh, just the, uh, we're gonna use organic molecules to make them. Oh, that's very good. It's, it can also using these weights that we all have challenges to recycle them to make the carbon quantum dots. So it's, it can like using them for carbon quantum dots is another way to recycle them in a very, very good way. So the hydrothermal, let's talk about the hydrothermal method. The hydrothermal method involves heating a mixture of the carbon precursors and uh, the aqueous echo solution with such as water under high pressure and temperature in a sealed stainless steel outflow. The hydrothermal method is exactly similar to the pressure cooker that you can use to make a roast beef or something. So what we need, the organic molecule or the ingredients, dissolve it in water, because the organic molecule is usually dissolving soluble in water. If not, we can use other solvents. And then we put it in the reactor, in the pressure cooker, we seal the lid, there is no air can come going out. We put it in the oven and uh, we can use the temperature between 100 to 200 degrees and the time between 2 to 24 hours. Because of this high temperature and pressure, the cooking will be happen. And then at the end, we have a, like a purification that we get rid of any impurities and uh, unreacted ingredients. And we have the carbon quantum dots. So again, it's very similar to the uh, pressure cooker. You just put everything in that in the pot and then you cook them. So this is a video I made, uh, uh, probably I'll be showing the tutorial that how I can make the carbon quantum dots. So a high temperature and pressure in hydrothermal method provide the energy for the, uh, for the carbon niches, uh, building blocks to form a graphitic core. So it is a kind of partial breakdown of the precursors. So this is the, for example, ingredients that we use. We put it uh, at high temperature and pressure, but because it's not the temperature is between something between 100 to 200, uh, it's not completely break down the structure of the uh, initial uh, molecule that we use. So the, uh, uh, the, core, the core of the um, uh, uh, 
carbon quantum dots will be formed by the in, like the partial breakdown of these precursors. So they will be breakdown and then they will uh, form the core of these uh, carbon quantum dots, which is they, they, uh, they, they are forming the graphene layers with different uh, orientations. And then, as I mentioned, at the on the surface, then we will have the functional groups that we initially had um, on the uh, on the molecule. So, for example, let's say in this case, uh, this area will be break down due to high temperature and pressure. They form the graphene layers on the core, and then because of the high temperature and pressure, they start the core start getting bigger. There are more graphene layers in there, but the functional groups remain constant, as you can see here. Yeah, so that's why we call we call this uh, uh, this ingredient that we use or the hardware thermal that we use we call it the, stru the structural memory of the carbonaceous precursor. So at the end, they will keep their uh, functional groups initially like similar to the beginning of the synthesis. Yeah, so uh, same as other methods that we discussed, uh, the uh, size and the structure of carbon quantum dots can be adjusted by the synthesis parameters. So the reaction time, reaction temperature, amount of uh, carbon precursors, amount of the dopants that we can add, and type of the solvent that we can use. We can use other solvents uh, besides the water. But because we are aiming to use them for biological application, water is the best. 